Life is so strange. You know, the more open we are to its strangeness, the more we get out of it. You know, you, you, we, we could have all the knowledge in the world, we could be highly educated. And sometimes it really doesn't get us anywhere. And sometimes all you need to do is pee. <laughs> I tell you something that happened yesterday. You know, I was setting up my dog's pool. And because the water here is so very different, you know, I've never met water like this before. It's so different from the water that we had before. I mean, before the pool chemistry, it took me like two months to figure out the perfect pool chemistry. And then when we moved here, it was the water was just so strange that um, I was at a complete loss. I just couldn't balance it. I tried everything. I tried uh, baking soda. I tried over chlorinating it. I tried um, draining it halfway and then filling it with fresh water. I, I tried everything over two days and nothing worked. And guess what? What I did in just 10 seconds, actually under 10 seconds, the water is now perfectly balanced. Perfect pH, perfect chlorination. And guess what I did? I peed in it. <laughs> I didn't know what else to do. So I just peed in it and I hoped for the best. <laughs> and it, it's perfect now. So, you know, life is just so strange. I did so much research on water chemistry. And yet, all it took was a 10-second pee. I know it sounds disgusting, but hey, it worked. So that's that. Today, I want to talk about, um, you know, something came up to my mind the other day. I want to talk about abandonment. If you have abandonment issues, if you still feel abandoned by someone that you loved, someone, you know, it could be a friend or family member or someone that you, you dated, if you still have uh, those abandonment issues, I just want to validate your feelings about that. And I want to introduce something positive. You see, the soul needs to grow. The soul is not happy unless it's growing. And sometimes when people abandon you, it's simply because they don't deserve you. Yeah? If they stayed in your life, your soul is not going to grow. And it's just going to feel so cramped. It's going to feel stagnated. And it'll never be happy and at peace. So when people abandon you, it's a good thing. Now, I don't want to trigger you if you have just suffered some kind of abandonment. But hear me out, okay? That person does not deserve you. Sometimes when, when the incident is fresh, it's very difficult, it's very hard to accept that because, you know, we're all sad and depressed and we want to die and, you know, the world has ended. But, you see, if that person deserved you, they would stay in your life. You know, the reason that they, they left you is because either it was intentional, in which case, let them go because... You know, their favorite uh, reason is, oh, you deserve better than me. I know it's a loser, douchebag thing to say, but it's true. You do deserve better. But sometimes there is no explanation. Uh, sometimes they don't even know. It just didn't work out. And um, when there is no explanation, don't seek closure from them. Because when you are desiring closure from them, you are giving them additional power. You're giving them power to control how you feel. Take that power back, you know, take that power back and do your own closure. So what if they, if they give you closure? So what if they, whatever they say, are you going to believe them? And if, if you want closure from them and they're not giving it to you, you're going to be spending sleepless nights wondering if it's this or that, what happened, how did, you know, how did it come to this? You'll be thinking of like a million scenarios, thinking yourself into a corner and still not come out any wiser because you just don't know the truth. And if they give you an answer, will you believe them? 
would you want to believe them? You see, so the simple thing, the simple answer when someone abandons you is just that they don't deserve you. It's true that they don't deserve you, so let them go. Things happen to make our souls grow because that's what our soul wants. That's the only thing that our soul wants is to grow. Growth is wealth to the soul. Growth is fulfillment to the soul. I know we're still living in the material world, yeah? It's not all airy-fairy, woo-woo, spiritual, 100% of the time. We're still living in the material world. So a certain degree of comfort is necessary. So a certain, a certain amount of money is necessary. But money reaches diminishing returns. You see, physical comfort also reaches diminishing returns. You can have the most comfortable lifestyle. How much more comfortable can it get? But when the soul grows, it's infinite. But for some people, being abandoned is not that easy to deal with, especially if they are financially dependent on the person who, ad who abandoned them. And if they were physically dependent, let's say they're physically disabled, you know, that can get very hard. But let's say you're financially dependent. You can always get any job, find any job. There is no shame in working in a fast food restaurant. There is no shame in being a cleaner or a rubbish collector. In fact, there is so much more pride in those jobs than lying and cheating and sponging and grifting and, and you know, manipulating. There is so much more pride in those what people call lowly jobs. There is no such thing as a lowly job. You know, a surgeon, whether you're a surgeon or a rubbish collector, the world needs them both. You know, this, this brings to mind um, someone that I know, and her name is Mrs. I first met her in, um, we were doing a dance performance in our national theatre. I mean, it's like really, really posh and high end. It's like the Royal Albert Hall of Malaysia, you know, the Carnegie Hall. It, yeah, it's, it's, it's that big. So it was all posh and all, and um, I had some books to sell there as well, because in my, my travelogue, called a backpack and a bit of luck. There is one story there. The main story is about Indian classical dance and India, Indian, Indian culture. So I thought it was relevant to sell the, the books there as well. So I had a stall there. And then during, um, then after the show, when we came out, I saw Mrs. She was in, she was in a floral, a cotton floral house coat, like a kaftan sort of thing, you know? And she was wearing bedroom slippers with socks. This was in the National Theatre. She couldn't give a rat's ass what people thought of her, you know. She looked so out of place. Her hair is grey and, and, you know, unkempt. And then she, right there and then, she bought 20 books. She said, oh, I read a little bit of it and I thought I'd buy, I'd, I'd buy some books for my friends. And, I, you know, I was so interested in this character. She, she is so cultured, and yet she looked nothing like a cultured person. I mean, she's not wealthy, but she was just so cultured. So I struck a friendship with her. And, uh, you know, years later, we were still friends. I would visit her in her very low-cost apartment in a, in a rough part of the city. And she would tell me stories, and she... Um, educated me a lot and she told me about her past you see when she was a young woman she was uh, maybe in her late 20s or early 30s she had about five ch she, she had five children under the age of 10 and then her husband died and uh, after that the whole family abandoned her and kicked her out of the house with the children she she she's she never went to school she's completely uneducated and yet, you know, the books that she reads, like Kafka and uh, Khalil Gibran, you know, her, her house is full of books, and there's so much more intellectual than any book I ever owned. So anyway, the story is that um, they were all kicked out of the house, and they were homeless. So with five children under 10 to take care of, 
what she did was every morning she would go to the the market, yeah, and she would collect the vegetable trimmings and clippings. And you know when people uh, get rid of the rotten leaves of lettuce and and carrot peelings and everything, it was just, it just, they just it just falls onto the floor and she would just collect them. And that's how she made meals for her children. And now that the children are, oh, Mrs. probably about 80, in her 80s now, and the children are all grown up and doing so well. And, you know, she is one of the most amazing, most fascinating people I have ever met. And um, all because she was abandoned. You see, that family who kicked her out, her and five kids, do you think they deserved her? No, they did her a favor. Of course, it was no picnic, you know. Being a single mother, homeless, with no job. So anyway, uh, after, she was collecting the, the vegetable uh, trimmings every morning, but then she also got herself uh, two jobs, yeah? Cleaning, I think it was a cleaning job. And she still lives very humbly now. She lives in a one-bedroom apartment with a bathroom that's so small you can't even fit yourself in if you're over, you know, 150 pounds. And every time I visit her, she would so generously give me food and, and you know, oh, do you want this? Do you, do you want that? You know, do you want a microwave? And I'm thinking, huh? No, I don't want a microwave. What are you talking about? She would just give the clothes off her back still. And this is someone with a soul that is so advanced. I don't even have a scale for it. Now, of course, I don't wish for that to happen to anyone, you know, to be kicked out into the streets with five screaming children. Of course, I don't hope for that. That's, it's not, a, you know, it's, it's not easy. It's, it's, it's you, know, I, you know, I have no idea how some people survive, not only survive, but thrive because of their adversities. You know, it's a bit more than just an adversity. You know, for some people, it's the end of the world. For some people, when they break a nail, it's the end of the world. You know, I have friends like that. You know, they break a nail and, and they're like panicking and, and, and the whole day is, is, is spoiled and they're in a bad mood and when it, God forbid should you call them, they'll scream at you. Why? Because they broke a nail. Everyone gets the opportunity for their soul to grow. Even a broken nail, yeah, it can. It depends on how dramatic your reaction is. It depends on how disastrous you think it is. You know, the first step of enlightenment can be a broken nail if people decide to take that opportunity. Now, obviously, Mrs. Uh, um, past is just, you know, horrendous. And not many people can actually, you know, um, get over it and thrive because of it and be so, so emotionally and spiritually successful because of it. That's, that's a very hard journey. But each of us is given something that we can cope with. And she just happened to be able to cope with all that. You know, if we can't, then we're not going to be given that sort of level um, in order to learn. We can learn from anything, and our soul can grow from anything. But I feel that, you know, since we're talking about abandonment today, I just feel that being abandoned is a great opportunity to sharpen your skills at being truly independent. I mean, most people think they're independent. Yeah, I, I thought I was independent until, you know, stuff happened and I thought, fuck me, I am not as independent as I thought I was. You know, and it, it just, the disasters just uh, happened, became worse and worse and worse until I 
you know, went through the dark night of the soul, and that was really uh, the worst time uh, of my life. And I hope I don't have any more of those because I get it. I get it now. You know, take every little opportunity to learn to for your soul to grow, because. When the soul grows, the fulfillment is sustainable. The fulfillment is real. And with that fulfillment, there is no diminishing returns. It's obvious that with material stuff, how much better can it get? How much more comfortable do you want to be? How much more status do you want? They'll still come to a point where it's just not enough. It still comes to a point where money has diminishing returns. But fulfillment of the soul doesn't, because when we are, well, I believe this is just my opinion. Yeah, I believe that when our soul is truly fulfilled, it goes into another realm. It's not in the realm of this material world. It goes into the realm of the infinite. It becomes one. It's at one with the universe, with God. Now, I don't. I don't. I don't say God in a religious. Uh, from a religious perspective, you know, God is whoever you think is a higher power. God is us. Our higher self is God, for want of a better word. You see, so when 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 the soul is truly fulfilled, then it becomes one with the universe, with God, with source energy. You know, we return. To the source from which we came, and when we get there, there is no such thing as abandonment. The whole world can abandon me, and I, I, I couldn't care less. Oh well, as long as my dogs don't abandon me, that is, yeah, that's non-negotiable. Well, you know, I'm not there yet. No, I, you know, I'm far from there. Oh, we we go through so many stages of enlightenment. There's no such thing as just one stage of enlightenment, and suddenly you know you're a guru. Suddenly you're happy and blissful all day long, twenty four seven. You know, there's several levels of enlightenment, and life is still the same. Everything is the same. It's just that we've made it through one spiral, and we're now going through another spiral, and another spiral, and another spiral, all the way to I don't even know where. But at some point, you know, you don't have to wait until you're truly hundred、uh, percent, you know, angel status enlightened. As long as you have some degree of enlightenment, you can feel being at one with source energy. Life continues to hurl problems at you. You can deal with them so much better. That's all. Life doesn't change for us. But one thing I know can change is when you pee in the pool, you alter the chemistry. <laughs>